so good evening good morning good afternoon from wherever you're watching um i would like to say hello to everyone uh today as per usual now um uh, as per usual every monday moonflare is having a live and today uh, the live host is me. Hello, everyone. And my name is Monica Yokubuitite. It's super hard, I know. <laughs> That's why I always go with Monica Yok. That's way easier. I have my logo. So if you see this, that's me. And you can find me everywhere by this link. I'm a part of amazing Moonflare content crew, uh, which I'm really proud of. And yes. The today's theme is uh, Q&A about everything you have, problems, questions, curiosity, everything about nails, art, and anything you like. So I'm going to cover uh, the questions I received over the stories and the comments and everywhere I could see them. Um, but of course, you can ask here. I will try to first prioritize the questions in the live and then go back to the ones that I got before. So hello everyone. I'm really happy you joined and you are with me. So don't be shy and be active and ask whatever you want. I will try to answer. And if I don't see it, I will try to scroll back and see it again. So. This is how you can find me. I will move that to the side. And I have my notes. So I'm not gonna... Hi from Canada. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Hi. That's really cool. I have no clue what's the time in Canada, but thank you for watching and joining. Uh, I have my notepad, which I will write some notes and demonstrations and things like that. I was considering to do live uh, showing my face, but I've decided that it's more better to show the drawings, diagrams, and writings. Um, I don't see any questions at the moment, so I will start with the ones I got in the stories and the comments. So from the information I gathered, uh, many people have problems with preparation of the nail. How to prepare the nail right, how to prepare the nail quick, uh, how do you know if it's good or not. So the, uh, the nail preparation is almost the same if you do gel polish or extensions. It's just you miss some steps until the end for extensions and then um, you do all the way manicure for gel polish, for example. So, okay, so preparation um let's say gel polish and extensions so what do we do first of all we take the material off uh, material off this point is quite important because if you leave any lifts lifts and things like that you will have the material take uh, it will lift off later so you have to remove all the material that's not needed and you need to remove in gel polish about 85 95 percent and for the extensions depending on the nail shape and form i would say about 80 to 90 maybe so you take the material, you take the length, which is regular, and it goes for both. Next for the preparation, it goes the cuticle prep, which is super important. So when you have the nail, you have to remove the cuticles from the cuticle area. Let's say that's our nail. So to be able to do that easier, you have to lift the cuticles with a pusher. So you lift the cuticles with a pusher, so you have a better access to remove all the dead skin 
and what's not needed on the nail. So with a cuticle pusher, I just want to take one as an example. I'm gonna use the wooden like that. And what you do with the nail, you never push like that. You never push in the angle because you can damage. That's a big no-no. So what you do is you push it slightly and try to lift it from your nail. So you have like a tiny socket. And this way it will help you to lift your cuticle and be better prepared for the next step for the drill bit of your choice. Uh, so, cuticle pusher. So it goes both ways, gel polish and the extension. Then we need to prepare take everything that's not needed off. So I took some drill bits as an example, which are these that I use the most. So uh, this drill bit I use if the cuticles are very much sticked to the nail. Um, they are very elastic and attached to the nail plates. Then you have an easier access when you're trying to remove to push the cuticle a little bit back. Then this is the most used drill bit that I have. And with this, you remove the dead skins from the nails and lift up the cuticle and prepare the nail for the next step. Uh, in my work experience, if it's a gel polish, I use forward to go this side and then I use uh, reverse to go this side and clean the socket really well. So the next step would be, so I'm just gonna note it down, clean the nail bed. And that goes to both sides. Next step is it depends. If it's a gel polish, next step what we do is we take the excess uh, skin and you can use a ball shaped drill bit. You can use cuticle scissors, cuticle nippers, any way you do it, it works. And for gel polish, after that, your nail is ready. For extension, next step would be to build the nail shape and buff. So everything you need to do before applying the, um, the top coat. And when you've done all of that, it goes, then you clean the dead skin if you still have it. Because sometimes when you use the nail file and you file off, there's not much left, so you don't need to do much, but that's the time where you take off the excess skin. Take off the excess skin. So yes, this is the preparation with the cuticles. And the next step is dehydration. Uh, I like to use the dehydrator or cleanser. All the, all the brands have their different names and all the brands, they use different names and types. So uh, just use your brand and follow the instructions. That's the best I can advise. Um, I do prefer the ones that are in the bottles and I just use the wipe to dehydrate and clean my nail. So it's all ready and clean. Uh, the next problem that people had was with the uh, dust, getting the dust out of the cuticles, the sidewalls. So while you're doing all the steps that I talked here, um, it's very important to get the dust out of the way while you're doing the manicure. That's why we use a brush and we just clean off in the process, the things 
that is not needed. This way you will see if you're cleaning the cuticle, if the nail bed is clean, um, it, you will see how tidy it is, and you will see if you need to take some more skin off, because sometimes if it's very dusty, you can drill the nail thinking it's dust. Well, actually there's no dust at all. So um, if you're not sure and or you're having some problems before you apply gel polish or any other material, um, you can use this brush, this type of brush. You put it in a drill, it turns, of course, on a low rotation um, when you clean the cuticles. That works as well. So I'm just gonna check if there's any more questions that I missed. Hi everyone, hi, thank you for the ones who joined. I hope I'm giving you something useful. Let me know if everything's all right. Do you have any problems with preparation? Maybe I missed something. I see some hearts. Thank you so much. So yes. So I think I covered the preparation. Um, the preparation is very important because it depends how the nail will last and hold, but of course it's not the main point. There's many things that goes into nail building, gel polish, and everything that you need to keep in mind. Next, next uh, question. Hi, Sylvia. Really nice to see you joining. Um, next, I had a question about the shaping, which is, um, uh, I think it's hard to know when to stop prepping. I think I spent too much time on it. Uh, the time, yes. It's, um, it's a huge topic that everyone wants to improve their time. So I pinpointed, I have my notes on the side. So I pinpointed some things that can help you to improve with the time. I definitely do not recommend to rush the process of prepping. Uh, I would prefer people take their time and do it right. Um, but there is some things that you can do. Oops, sorry. There is some things that you can do and help with the time, with the whole work. So let's start, uh, let's call it speed. And by the way, you can screenshot that after. Uh, so we want to have speed. First rule to have speed is tidy table. Tidy table, super important because if you have a mess, you keep tripping, you don't know where everything is, you just, your get head is not tidy as your table is not tidy. So tidy table helps you to know where everything is, which brings me to second point. Um, know where your stuff is, that's a huge time consumer. Organizing the materials. So that means I know where my stuff is. Prepping, priming, materials, polishes, decorations, crystals. I know where there is. If I want to take something, it doesn't take me time to find it because I know where it is. That's a time saver. So next thing, saving time is working in steps. So working in steps. This is also a very hard, quite hard, not super hard, but quite hard step to do, but improves the time very much, which means let's talk about prepping again. I'm filing the material off. I'm filing to all of the 10 nails. I'm fixing the filing or lifting with a nail file. I'm doing to all of the nails. I'm fixing the form. 
before I do anything else, I do it to all of the nails. I use the pusher. I push all of my nails. Every step that you do, you do in order, one by one, to all of the nails. That means all the drill bit uses, all the filing techniques, everything goes one step by one in for the whole tell 10 fingers or 10 nails. It improves the speed very much. Like, I mean, it's hard to not jump from one thing to other, but it helps because our brain, if we do the same motion again and again, we do it better every time. And our brain recognizes the motion and it does it faster. It's not like jumping. It would be like, mm, what could be the comparison? Like doing two things at the same time, jumping from one to another. It, it just it just gets you out of hand. So you lose the track and you don't know, like, did I do it on this one or did I do on this one? Have the system. A lot of the clients, they ask me, like, how do you know what which nail to take, which uh, step to take? Because I do it every time the same. I start from the left, go to the right, every step. So working in steps, another one is tracking time. So if you divide your service into steps, which would be like uh, taking off the material, prepping the cuticle, um, putting on the material, I'm just saying in basic steps, um, painting the arts and then filing, shaping, whatever you want. Divide your service into points and use your time clock on your phone and just see how long every step takes you and try to concentrate and improve with the time. And you can see if you track your times, you can see where you take the most, where you can improve. Um, so next step, talking. conversations with the clients they're so pleasant clients love it and it's all really nice and good until it takes your time you don't notice how you look at the client you show the gesture or you're talking about something that you want to show in your phone or things like that it takes time and you think it's just a minute or a second there but all the seconds and the minutes they add up and that's when you lose the time that is so true if i do uh, this in a different order i lose the track almost immediately exactly not this it's it's you, when you have the order you know what you're doing you know what's coming and you know what to do next you have a system and the system with a system you get the best results so um uh, number six doing the steps right I don't know if you ever noticed, the more you rush, the more time you take to do it. That's like a golden rule for me, at least. For example, um, I really feel I'm short of the time. I'm rushing. And when I'm rushing, I'm doing the steps wrong. I'm not doing the cuticle right. I didn't file the lift before. Or like I rushed, I overlaid the gel to the sidewall or, or things like that. So... This way, when you rush, you do mistakes that causes you more time to fix after. Or like if you put the gel polish too thick and then in the lamp, it just crunches and then you need to take it off again and do it again. So doing the steps the right way, even if you take more time, it might save you time in the future. Hello, Ellen. Ellen, I think it's right. right. So doing the steps right. So you can avoid the fixing the fixing number eight choosing design i can't even tell you how much time i spent to this point uh very often the clients don't know what they want to do they don't know what color to take, what design, what length, what shape, and things like that. Uh, I personally try to 
have a line where they have to know what they want to do because everything needs to have to be done for gel polish before you apply the base coat because when you start applying the base coat everything sticks to the nails and then it gets ruined and then you take more time to fix it to clean it to to make it right so choosing the design it gives a client a time limit that they need to choose you know what to do you can create a plan in your head for example if you have a design that needs inlays or reversed French or anything like that you have the time to plan in your head what step goes after what and things like that so eight points mm. tidy table yes I think I covered most of them I can't think of anything else at the moment but yes this is the main points for the speed um, if you have anything to add up just write it up I can see it and I can add it and yes so uh, oh oh I know uh, drill bits drill bits sharp if you have not sharp tools or not sharp drill bits it will take you time to take off the material, to work with the dead cuticle, to do everything will take you longer because you can't work efficiently. You will do it and do it and take it off the material way longer that you would do with the new tools. That saves you time. I really want to come up with the 10th one, but I'm not sure. Uh, so how long does it usually take you to do a new set with extensions uh, the time I wouldn't for me so I will tell you my times but it doesn't mean that you need to be guided with it you take your time you everything comes with a practice yeah number 10 practice oh I don't know if I write it right um, it takes time with the practice the more you practice the more you do sets the quicker you will get so I will write you my times but it doesn't mean that you need to or is it the best time to do it you take your time and you do the job right that's the best so gel polish with base 60 minutes gel polish with color 75 French fade simple designs 90 minutes uh, and difficult designs like a lot of art it would be like 120 minutes because I like to take my time. Uh, extensions. Extensions and new sets for me is the same. I feel like it takes the same time. It doesn't matter what you do. Um, so the very base one, I would say, with no color, just the gel, 90 minutes. But it's very hard to say, like, because it depends what kind of client you have. You know, sometimes you can have, like, uh, very perfect nailed client that has no lifts has perfect shape you don't need to do much it makes it takes less time if you have very difficult where you have the nail growing down you want to straighten up and things like that it takes time so uh the everything else it's regularly about 120 minutes and very extra so it's like reversed french reversed uh, building French like uh, with stuff inside or like arts and things like that it takes 120 minutes and then something extravagant it takes more like I would say 150 minutes but that's the most I have few clients that I give time like three four hours for them as well and but I enjoy doing it and then I know I'm creating I'm doing something 
that I want to think about, I want to take my time, I want to spend more, so I will give more time. I don't pressure myself and I feel no one needs to pressure themselves to do something because it's the regulation. Take your time. I've seen something. For me, spending time on the gel placement is a big thing. That saves me a lot of time on filing in the end. That's true. And by making the right uh, the steps right, you will save time in the future because you don't need to fix too much and you don't need to do stuff. So, any more questions? I don't see. Give me some hearts that I know that someone's watching, at least. <laughs> so... I'll go back to my note, which I got from the Instagram stories. So, uh, there was a question. Selena, hello. Sorry, I'm late, but I'm here in the background. Hello, Selena. Oh, that's my note. Oh, I've seen the, uh, the question about baby boomerang and the reversed French. Uh, I think, and the C curve. So it's a huge topic. I won't touch it today, uh, bec but you can find it in my nail academy with, where Selena explains everything really good. So you can go there and check it out. Um, I'm actually nearly finished with that course, so it's really, really good. I really know that. Uh, oh, how to make manicure color smooth and even. I think it's in the prep that is wrong. So... Uh, making the gel polish smooth um for that all not all i can't say all because the gel polish before you apply the gel polish you have the base coat and with the base coat you make all the smoothness um the preparation is more for holding purposes how long you will wear the nails but the gel polish base um strength like if you strengthen your nail with gel polish base you even out the surface so everything you had that was wrong not maybe everything but a lot of things you can fix for example when you have the nails that grow up there is people that have this type of nails so with the gel polish you fix it and you have you make a little natural apex and you fix the form and the bumps and everything that's that is not even um, so this way when you even out the gel polish you have the smooth surface the nice surface that will be even for the gel polish to apply and um, of course uh, the recommendation is to don't make the thick layers of the color because then it will be hard to even it out or make it smooth so it, i rather would go with um one or two thin coats depending on the coverage of the gel polish uh, and then even then if you have like something a little bit that's like mm, i don't know it feels like i it's still not perfect you can use top coat to adjust a tiny bumps not huge ones but tiny bumps so starting to use a buffer was a game changer for me when it came to smoothness in training i was only thought to use a file figure out for myself that going over going over all the nails with the buffer after filing makes a world of a difference for color application well it yes yes and no yes yes probably mostly yes um, because if you're applying a thin layer of base coat, a thin layer of um, color, then yes, you need to buff your nail to perfection to have it smooth. Um, but if you have the nail strengthening, where you're going to adjust the nail surface with the gel polish base, then even if you have a tiny bump or something like that, it won't affect because you will make the smooth surface with the base. Um, but there's a but if you like file down the material and for example the free edge was lifted so let's say sorry if i my 
painting is not so good, but I want you to get the point. So for example, I filed my material off, the tip was lift off, so I took off the tip, I leave a little bit, it's, I'm showing it too much, it's not like that, but it's for you to understand. So I have my material here up and the tip was lifted, so I filed the tip, so I have like nothing lifted off the nail. And then if you want to even out the surface, you have this big thing. And by that, then you will have a problem to even it out because the material will be running all over the place and you can't even even it out. But if you have like a tiny bump here or like really, really tiny bump there and you try to even it out, then it's not the problem. But the big differences they do make more difficult to even the stuff out. With the amount of gel coat of natural nail to fill the dip, how would you remove it? Um, I don't work with gel polish dips. I, I never tried that technique, so I don't know. I use the gel polish bases and the gel polish colors. Uh, and I do remove it with a drill bit. I never use acetone. So the, yes, the drill bit is, you can remove like 90, 95% off the material of gel polish base. So next, yeah. So if you have any types of questions or you know the things how I'm doing, just, yeah, just go ahead. I'm here for like half an hour still. So the C curve I've covered, it's in, in my nail academy. Uh, 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 lifting. Does anyone have problems with lifting? In general. Yes, no, I don't know. Well, I had a question in the story about lifting. So why the nails lift? So one of the reason, bad preparation, uh, which can be not removing enough, not, not removing completely the dead skin of the nail. Uh, so cuticles from that. Then it can be not removing the gel or gel polish or any kind of material that is on the nail correctly. Uh, not removing gel, gel right. So that means if you have a fill or gel polish, um, some people have lifts in the middle, um, you need to take all the bubbles out. Everything that's been lifted, you need to take it away. For one, it will lift sooner or later, but it will lift. Second, the water will go under and it can go to fungus and all that fun stuff. Super important. So, bad prep. Uh, the lifting can be caused by, uh, I will call it tired nail. If the nail is overfiled, hurt, damaged, and things like that, the more you go through the nail, layers, the deeper the nail is damaged, the less the material will hold. That means it gets more oily, it gets more damp because our nail, the more, because this is dead on the top, but then the deeper you go into the nail, it gets wetter, uh, oilier, and all that stuff. And when you have red damaged nails, not a lot of stuff is holding onto the nail. That means the best option for that is to wait, leave the nails without the material. If they're really, really bad, you leave it without the material and let them heal. Or try to do it carefully, shorten the length, um, uh, ask the client to come more often, to not have any more lifts or any more damage to the nail to avoid 
even worse damage. So, next one, right usage of material. So, material use. That means under curing, um, the lamps are not working, they're old, they're not strong enough, uh, not working by the manufacturer advice, which means like, um, if you have LED gels, don't put it in a UV lights and things like that. Um, so you really need to follow the instructions of the brand you are using. And in right usage, the material will work how it's supposed to be. Same way with the prepping bonds and things like that. You need to learn the materials, how you have to work with them. So, uh, next thing is material usage, the lamps I covered, the shape and the length. Shape and length. Uh, shape and length is uh, very important actually uh, because not all the uh, nail types can have all nail uh, forms uh, not all people can have extra long nails which i think some of you will agree like some people can wear like super super long nails and they would be fine and some people can have short nails and they would still damage it and break it so for you as a nail tech you have to choose correctly what the person needs and advise them right which is showing your professionalism which is good for you and it's good for the client because it will improve the awareness of the nail how long it will last and you know everyone hates the broken nail and things like that it hurts so shape and length and also um, check with the client what they are doing in life that's a huge thing um, because uh, many problems that can come with lifting is what they do for a living. And, but with that, you need to choose what materials to use, what shape and length. It's not just like you can use the same material to all of the people and it will work the same. So next thing, I've seen a question. So... Do you think fiberglass gels are better for long nails or is there a type of gel you prefer for that? Uh, prefer for what? Um, and the fiberglass gels, uh, they are tend to be stronger because they have fibers that they connect and hold the strength. But then again, if you do the bad architecture of the nail, it won't hold whatever you do. And that was my next point that I wanted to cover is architecture. So how you build your nail is very important because you can, if you build it the wrong way, it won't last, it won't hold. You can use the strong materials, you can use the light materials. You need to do it right, have the right shape, the right sidewalls, the right length, thickness and everything to have it pleasing aesthetically view that it looks nice and it wears nice. So architecture is super important. I came across a theory where it says that you should do new set of nails after three or four refills due to the product getting old. Do you practice that? Um, no, because when I remove the material from the nail, I remove it like 90% of it, 80, 90%. So that's not much left on the nail but it still has a little bit so i don't file the natural nail every time so i just file let's say that's the outgrowth of the nail so my client came with the outgrowth so i will file that material off so i will have like really really tiny bit of the material left and then um i will shape it add the new one and let's say they come back after the month and I do the same. And this bit that is outgrown, it goes down, down, down. So you never touch the natural nail. The material is changed every time. So you don't need to do that. The only thing when I do replace the, I do the new set instead of the 
infill is when I have the nails that grow down. So this is when I do that because uh, I know, uh, of course, it's a preference. I don't say it's wrong, but for the nails that grows down, they need to, uh, I like to make them straight like that. So for me, it makes a nice view. It's straight. It's not going down, especially if you have, it's very common to have these nails straight or, and this one goes down. And then you have like, these nails are straight and nice, and this one is going down. So in, in that matter, you have to, let's, let's see if I can show you, like this is the nail that goes down, let's say. So in order to make the nail straight, I need to put all this material that I can take it off from under. So I put thick material layer at the tip of the nail and then I take it out of under so I can make the nail straight. Uh, so this takes a lot of time and material, which is very much advised to sh uh, take off all of the material, not from the nail. You can leave like five, 10% on the nail, but you make them super, 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 super short and just do a new set. It will save you time. It will save you energy, time and materials. So that's when I do it, but I don't change it for the purposes of uh, the material getting old. Because if you uh, change the material every three, four weeks, it's fine. You won't have a problem with that. So what else? You're welcome. What else? So I had the same question on the Instagram stories when doing fill, when you recommend taking down the whole length and then rebuild. And of course, uh, with rebuilding, it's if you feel like it's more comfortable for you to take off the material and work with the forms to do a new set, just do it. There's no right or wrong. There's no um, exactly rules that you need to follow. If that's, that makes you more comfortable, just do it. Um, and now, I don't know if you have seen, there's a top forms. Um, let me see if I can find to show you. Yes, I have it close. So there is a new thing that's going around, which is like top forms where you put the gel, acry gel, whatever you want in there and you top it off. I think every, most of you have probably seen it and you put it on your nail and you have shaped nail and everything's there. So when you're using these, this is like new set every time. You take off the material, shorten the nail and put the new one on. So that's that. Uh, how many of you are doing gel polishes more than uh, fills? Or is it fills more than gel polish? Because for me, it's uh, I do more gel polishes than fills, but I still have the fills and new sets and things like that. So I'm interested is what do you have more? So, and I, have you tried them? I haven't, but I'm super curious. Um, I do have them. I do try them and I will say it, it looks very easy, but it's not. It looks super easy, but it's not that easy. You need to really have a um, good eye on the amount of the material that you put in the form. Because if you put too much, it will overflow. If you put less, you will have holes under. It's, it's quite difficult. And it's quite difficult to find the good forms that will fit. Mm, I would like to go to a course uh, to learn that. But it looks really cool. It makes your job easier. But it's not that you're going to do it from the first time. It takes time to get it. It takes time to get it. So 
I have a question. I have a nail biter that have super short nails, just a few millimeters, how you would extend them. Um, there's a few ways. The top forms will work perfectly for them. Um, uh, it's really comfortable to use for super short damaged nails, like if you have like cracks and things like that, because you put it from the top, it helps. But of course, you need to find them and learn how to do it. Uh, otherwise, um, it depends how bad it is. So let's say it's super bad, like they did terrible job, like they did, they ate a lot. <laughs> so um, what you do, if you don't have any edge to work on, uh, I would take a acrid gel uh, and then I would add the teeny tiniest acrid gel, poly gel or builder gel, like anything you can get your hands on and just add a teeniest tiniest bit so you can create your own free edge so when you have your own free edge then you can put the form and work it more so that's how i would do it if it's super damaged and super short if you still have like a tiniest free edge like at least anything to hang on if you can work it out you just you just need to make sure you cut your um, nail form right and you can just really push the form in. Like, I mean, not like it until it's painful, but I mean, you can try to work it out. When using a paper form, where exactly do you cut? I can never get it exactly perfectly. From where exactly do you cut? And let me get the nail form. Oh, sorry. The nail forms, they are a huge topic. They're quite difficult topic. And it's really, it's really a little bit hard for me to explain everything like in 10 minutes, like 10 minutes, is, like I, even maybe I have more like 15, but still it's not enough time to cover the huge topic, but here we go. I have it. Um, so I have my form. Um, so when you need to cut it, what I do, I don't do it now, but I did it in the beginning because it does help me. So let me just show you. So I didn't take the form from the paper. I'm just cutting out. Um, Let me see if I can get like, okay, that will work. I think my beautiful model will make it work. So I didn't take the form from the paper. I just cut the inside. So the first thing I do, uh, I just see how it fits. Of course, you need to see how high or low and things like that you need to do. Uh, so when you have at the right, um, horizontal position more upwards downwards you see what is missing so it's very hard to show on her yeah, let me take like a small tip to fill in so I can really show you better so. my beautiful model by the way they are available at Moonflare Okay, so let's say my form is like that, my nail is like that, which the shape is usually for the nails that go downwards. So you need to lift it up. So this is your um, point where the nail grows out, the free edge. And this is the gap you have until your form because you put your form right at the edge of the nail if you see right here. So you measure that, you go with the same that. That means until here, be careful. I'm just doing it because I have one hand, <laughs> but I marked like how much I need to cut it, how deep. So this is how much I need to go. So let's see, I'm just gonna do it really quick, like not maybe perfectly, but you will get the idea and you can practice that. 
So let's see now. So fits more better. You see, it has almost the same shape. And then you see where you need to cut the sidewall. So let's say I'll cut it here. I might not do it perfectly because my model is not very perfect, but I'm sorry, the model is perfect. I'm mistaken. It just really not that easy to work with. So now you have your uh, with one hand. It's not I, I should have used the arm holder, but I didn't thought I will be demonstrating that much. So anyway, let me just show you more quicker. Uh, well, I should have. It's very hard, but I think you can see it. Oh, I'm sorry, I took it off. But anyway, the shape fits and then it everything should fit by that. So you just measure how deep you need to go and try to replicate the nail form, the nail shape. Like if you have like that, try to cut it like this side more deep and leave this one side up and things like that. Then, uh, so this is the quickest way I can think of how to explain. But if you want to go really deeper into that, you can also go to My Nail Academy. Uh, Selena did an amazing job with forms. She's the queen. Um, so, uh, I've used forms. As most things, I guess it's easy once you learn it. I would be mean and tell a nail biter that they can't have extensions. I would do an overlay and ask them to come to come back every two weeks. If they can manage to not bite their nails and keep them healthy for maybe two months, I'd consider. With the gel polish, I feel like uh, from what I experienced, they still bite it. They don't care. But if they have like an extension, it's a harder material. It's not easy to bite. So usually they bury it with extensions and they stop doing it i have a lot of clients that they peel that's also really really bad uh for the sidewalls to release the skin on the sides it do, do you mean the do you mean the the forms or do you mean the manicure bit beautiful tattoos thank you so yes, um, how much time I have? I have a few minutes. <clears throat> I also had a question about making square nails um, that people are finding it hard to make the perfect uh, square, the short square. So one of the most important things is uh, applying right amount of product I mean, this is for extensions and fills, applying the right amount of product. Let me put her here. Applying the right amount of product so you have from what to make the shape. Um, let's say I have my nail here. So if I want to make the square nail, I do need to put the material enough because if you're gonna put not enough of the material, you already will lose the form. So you need to make sure you have from the top enough material so you can make two sidewalls. Two sidewalls, this is your guideline. Um, I have the tip like that. So this is your guideline because you need those sidewalls. And uh, one of the biggest mistakes on filing that people do uh, when you're shaping, if you file your nail like that, you usually mostly will overfile it too much in this area, which will give you some problems in the future. So to avoid that, you do in 45 degrees angle, touch the skin, that's enough. And that's where you file the, the nail. Um, of course, 90 degrees angle here. 
super important for the square shape because you don't want to see that perfect perfect square um what else for the square this um the square it helps to if you make the nail straight um the architecture it also helps with with the uh, tight lines because also if you have the side wall going down or the side wall going up it's very hard to manage the and with these side walls and these lines it's follow your finger like if you put the file like that you see where your line should be not lower not up like that same way here if you put it like that it should be like that the whole way straight by the this area um and uh, of course some filing mistakes if you um i'm just gonna show what i've seen the most people have making problems about it if you file like this usually you file more inside so i would recommend this type of filing for ballerina but if you want to really really make that square you'll go this way so that's one of the biggest mistakes and over filing it it can happen so quick you won't even notice and then you lost the form of course you can build it up back again that's not the problem it just takes the time so having a bright good um bright good filing structure and building will help you to have the nice square if it's too bulky then it's too much material a lot of people um they can leave too big of an apex, which gives the bulkiness. Um, I prefer to take off the material from under the nail. So I have this beautiful C curve, um, if it's a fill, because if it's a new set, you don't need to file under. Um, so yes, I tried to cover it as quick as I could and I don't know if you have any more questions that you might have. And yes, this is my beautiful hand. I love it. It's so pretty. I love the rings. I love the quality. Um, so yes, hearts, hearts, hearts. Thank you. Thank you so much. What else? What else I can tell you real quick? Let me see if I have. Um, the thing is, like, it's we have like a lot of topics that is very time cons con consuming. It takes time to explain, to show, to do. So I really recommend Selena's course. It has a lot of stuff that has the questions about. Uh, what else? What else? Mm -hmm. I don't see any more questions. I hope you're having a nice Monday evening or morning or lunch. Um, in Sweden, we have a super cold weather. So, but everyone in, at my, like all of my clients, they, they really uh, feeling the spring, they're going for the light colors and sweet colors. So that's really, really cool. Mm -mm -mm. I think that's it. I have covered everything I have on my notes. And then oops. I feel like I just talked to myself for an hour, but I do hope you found some useful information that you might use or try at the future. So this is me. You can follow me. And of course, you can always, always follow me, um, ask me questions, follow me, I'm sorry, I'm just, <laughs> it's funny how I said it, but anyway, you can um, text me, ask me anything, like, I will really, really answer you, and it's with all of the Moonflare content crew girls, they will always, always follow you, uh, and help you in your journey, in your nail work industry, and you can ask anything from technical to personal to i mean personal in some matter but 
it can be any type of questions we will try and help you as much as we can so thank you so so much for today um i hope i didn't annoy you too much and i'll see you next time and next monday it's going to be someone else that will take monday live so have a nice evening i love you all bye